The broadcast ministry of Christ Way Fellowship brings you victory for today. Exalting the Savior, evangelizing the seeker, and equipping the saint. Committed to the principle that you can have victory today and every day through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And now, here's your host, Pastor Wayne Duncan. Well, hello, friends, and welcome back to Victory For Today. Thank you for being a part of this subject that we're thinking about, these two videos on uh, what to do when things look blue. And we're in James chapter 1, and we've gone through, last week, you know, we read... Uh, the uh, verses 2 through 7 and so that's what we've been primarily looking at that and then verse 8 also and so we talked about the presence of trials and we talked about the fact that trials are universal everyone has problems and, and this this verse that we read here tells us that uh, when we have these various trials that we can have joy along with that and that's what we're looking for to be able to have joy in the midst of trials because it says doesn't say uh, if you have trials, it says when. <laughs> we all have them. And the thing about trials is they're temporary, but there's something to teach us. They, there's something that they have to do. And if you go back and watch the video that we did before part one of this talk, you'll catch on to that. But here we're talking about the purpose of these trials. Uh, why is it that we have to go through things like this? I mean, why isn't it just always you know, downhill and shady, you know, instead of uphill and loose gravel sometimes. <laughs> and life can be so difficult. It's like the old uh, country woman said one time that life just gets so daily sometimes. Well, there's a purpose in the trials that we go through. There's a purpose that can come from that. And, you know, it's like someone said one time, you never know, uh, Christians are like tea bags. You never know what they're really like until they get into hot water. <laughs> You've been there and done that. Well, here's something I can say for certain. God loves you, and he has a wonderful purpose for your life. That's right. And, and to refine this purpose in our lives is one of the reasons that we go through these trials, these difficulties, these struggles in life. You know, it said in the scripture that we read last week that it's for our perfection, that is to say our maturity. When it speaks about being perfect here, it's talking about maturing, becoming fully grown. When you're born, you're born as a little baby, and you grow into maturity. Same way when we're born again. We're born as babes in Christ, and then we grow in Him. But I want you to listen to this. Now, this is from Romans chapter 8, and this is verse 28 and 29. And I don't know if you've ever heard it explained just quite this way before. It says this, And we learn... Or excuse me, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. God loves you, and he has a purpose for your life, a wonderful purpose. Now listen to this. For whom he foreknew, God knows the end from the beginning, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. That, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So what's that wonderful purpose that God has for us? And that is that we would become like Jesus, the one who is in us. You remember John the Baptist made the statement when Jesus' ministry was beginning and was growing. He made this statement. He said, I must decrease that he might increase. Of course, he was speaking about their roles. John the Baptist came like, uh, in, you know, in the spirit of Elijah, he was the forerunner preparing the way of the Lord. And so he was to diminish as Christ rose, as his ministry became dominant. Well, we can take that in a spiritual sense for us, too, in a way. We can say, look, that old me, me, I must decrease that he, that is Christ who is in you, the hope of glory, that he may increase. As long as we just go on about our business, doing our stuff and doing what pleases us and giving no regard to our spiritual growth, 
we're not going to get anywhere in the Christian life. But these trials come along. These tests come along. <laughs> and that's when we have an opportunity to grow. And so that's what we're, the purpose of the trials is all, it, that we might grow into that image of Christ. Now, sometimes we think, well, oh, this is going to sink us, but it's not. It's going to make us. There was a little boy that had built him a little sailboat. He took it down to the pond and he was floating his sailboat and it got away from him. His older brother was nearby and he began to call out to him, help. Help me get my sailboat. And his brother came and he saw that the sailboat was drifting out. He reached down and he picked up a stone, a large stone beside the, the, uh, beside the pond. And he hurled it out in the direction of that sailboat. The younger brother began to scream, no, 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 thinking that his older brother was going to destroy the boat. But what that large stone did was it created a wave that brought the little boat back to the little brother. And you know what? Sometimes we think we're about to be crushed or drowned. Remember the disciples on that, on that little boat with Jesus? We're drowning. We're drowning. <laughs> and Jesus calmed the sea. But look, we go through these things so that we can learn to trust him. And so that this, this Christ in us, he's in us and that he may become dominant in us, not just, as I've said before, maybe you've heard me say this, not just resident, but president in our lives. <laughs> well, what's the product of these trials? Look what it says here. We've already talked about becoming more like Jesus or Jesus being dominant in our lives. It produces hupomone. It produces this being able to bear up under it also, it says in verse 4, it perfects us and completes us that we would lack nothing. If we mature as we go through trials and tribulations. Don't throw a little, little hissy fit when you're going through trials. No, just let God do his work in you and become more perfect, more mature in your walk with God, knowing that he's got it all under control. Remember, Happiness depends on happenings. Joy de depends on our relationship with Jesus. Amen. And even down in verse 12, we didn't even read this last week, but it says that when a man endures temptation, uh, uh, blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Do you love him? I, I hope that you do. I hope you love Jesus. And we we're waiting for that crown that he speaks about right here. You know, there's a little girl that uh, was peeling potatoes with her grandmother one time. And she found this real huge, beautiful potato in the sack. And she said, Grandma, look at this potato. And so she began to peel it. And it was just such a beautiful potato. And then she cut down into it. And you know what? It was just rotten, rotten, rotten on the inside. And the little girl turned to her grandma and she said, Grandma, this potato wasn't a very good Christian, was he? <laughs> well, these trials will make us good Christians if we don't rebel, if we understand that God's at work making that character of Christ come forth from us. He is in us, resident. Let him be president. I know you've probably heard of Charles Haddon Spurgeon, he was a famous, some, some people say not just a, a, a great preacher, but the greatest preacher since the Apostle Paul. He lived during the Victorian age in England. And he was quite, you know, most preachers like me, we've got books of Spurgeons on our bookshelves that we've read and studied. And But listen to what he had to say. This is from his heart. He said, I bear my witness, my willing witness, that I owe more to the fire the hammer and the file than to anything else in my Lord's workshop. I sometimes question whether I've ever learned anything except through the rod, the rod of correction. When my schoolroom is darkened, I see most. Now, dear people, don't get all upset when you're going through a difficult time. Realize that God loves you and he has a purpose, a wonderful purpose for your life. And he wants to make you over into the likeness of Christ. 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, including you and me. Okay. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I hope this is helpful to you. If you missed part one, go back and watch it and then come and watch this one again. Now, on our website, victoryfortoday.com, you will find over 300 talks and sermons on there, some audio, video, and some both. And so, uh, also, you might find uh, on there uh, a particular subject that you'd like to pursue. Uh, if you look at the, uh, go to the part that's called archives, so you you can see what's the last three that have been posted. But go down and there's a little uh, magnifying glass there and you can type in any subject like the Ten Commandments or love or, or whatever it might be, anger. And it will bring up every sermon, every talk that we have on there that deals with that subject. And it's over 300, so we've touched on a lot of things. Uh, also, the uh, PowerPoints are available very often on that. And if you don't have a Bible, I'd love to send you one absolutely free, no strings at Attached. You can have the New King James Version, which is the one that I've been using here in our talks. Or you can have the traditional King James or a Spanish Bible. And along with that, you'll get a little study guide entitled Beginning Steps. You'll get a little mini DVD entitled Who is Jesus? It's uh, excerpts, 20 minutes of excerpts from the gospel film, Matthew, one of my favorites. And uh, also you get some little booklets like the four spiritual laws, how to, uh, or have you made the wonderful discovery of the spirit filled life? And then there's one for a little comic book style, graphic arts, I think they call it now, for the kids. And uh, so you can get that absolutely free. Just uh, go to the website, you can order it there, or you can write to me if you're watching on YouTube Please uh, subscribe, and that way we can inform you when we have something new that comes online. But go to the website or write to us uh, for your Bible, absolutely free and no strings attached. Okay? God bless you. This is Wayne Duncan saying the good Lord willing and the saints don't rise. <laughs> I'll see you right here next time on Victory for Today. <laughs>